Lesson 106 is about roots of negative numbers, negative exponents, and zero exponents. So our first problem says find the third root of negative 64. Now the third root of negative 64 means what number do you have to multiply by itself three times the third root in order to get an answer of negative 64? Well, that's a challenging question. It would be easier if we looked at this problem like what number do we have to multiply by itself three times in order to get an answer of positive 64? And if I asked you that question, I think you might know that it's 4 times 4 times 4 because 4 times 4 times 4 is, ne is positive 64. So if we want a negative 64, we're going to have to multiply negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 because the opposite of a negative of a negative three negatives here that we're multiplying must give us a negative answer if we looked at that more closely negative four times negative four is equal to positive sixteen and positive sixteen times negative four the opposite of a positive that must be a negative that's equal to negative sixty four we've got our answer correct the way we write our answer is just by saying the third root of negative 64 is equal to negative 4. Note this is not a division problem. This is a root problem. So if you were to write the answer up here on the top, like you do a division problem, well, you've still got the right number. That's good. But we don't write it on top. We write it off to the side. So we can erase our green because that's not where we write our answer. Let's look at another problem. Here we have the fifth root of negative 32. If we want to solve the fifth root of negative 32, that means what number times itself five times equals negative 32? One, two, three, four, and five. That's going to give us an answer of negative 32. Well, if we started with the simplest number, one, if we had one, times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 that's not equal to negative 32 because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is equal to 1 so we can undo all of that let's try our next number 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 well 2 times 2 is 4 and 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 2 is 16, and then 16 times 2 is 32. So that's good. We've got the right number. The problem is we need negative 32, not positive 32. So it's going to have to be negative 2 all the way through. Since we have an odd number of negatives that we're multiplying, it's going to give us a negative answer. So our answer, the fifth root of negative 32, that must be equal to negative 2. We could box our answer and move on to our next question. Here we want to simplify. 1 over, the f 1 over 4 to the negative second power. Now whenever we have negative powers, we want to make them positive. So we're going to do exactly the opposite of what we see with that power to make it the opposite. So if we want to make negative 2 a positive, we're going to have to bring it to the opposite side of our fraction, which here would be the numerator. So we're going to say instead of 1 over 4 to the negative second, we're going to say 4 to the second. And 4 to the second, that's the same thing as 4 to the second over 1. And now we can find our answer, because 4 to the second, or 4 squared, 4 times 4, that's just equal to 16. And we know any number over 1 is just itself, so we've got an answer of 16. Let's look at another problem where we've got a negative exponent. Here we've got 1 over negative 2 to the negative 4th power. So we want to make our power the opposite, so we're going to bring the whole thing up to the top, up to our numerator, the opposite side of our fraction bar. So we're going to get negative 2, the base always stays the same, the power is what's going to change the opposite when we move it to the opposite side of the fraction. So we're going to get negative 2 to the fourth power. 
this must be over 1. Now negative 2 to the fourth is just negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And we know negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So negative 2 and negative 2 again must be positive 4. And 4 times 4 is 16. So we've got our answer. 16 over 1, that's just 16. Again, let's box it, and we can move on to our next example. Here we've got another one. Negative 1 over negative 3 to the negative second power. So let's move all of our denominator to the numerator, and that will make the opposite power. So this is going to be equal to, we've got a negative sign out front, so we've got to consider that. We're going to get negative 3 to the second power. The sign becomes opposite because we moved it to the opposite side of a fraction. That's over 1. Negative 3 squared is like saying negative 3 times negative 3, and that's 9. So we're going to get negative, because this comes along for the ride, negative 9 over 1 which is the same thing as negative 9. Whenever we have these problems with negative powers, we always bring them to the opposite side of the fraction, and we can make the power the opposite. We want to make the powers positive, so they're easier to, to simplify. Here we've got some more problems. If we've got 2 to the 0th power, well, that seems like a strange number, 2 to the 0th power, we know 2 squared is 4. We know 2 to the first is 2. If we had a problem like, say we had a problem like 2 to the negative first, well 2 to the negative first is really the same as saying 1 over 2 to the first power because we move it to the opposite side of a fraction and make the opposite value of our power, which is really just 1 half. So if we go from 4 to 2 to 1 half, we've got to have some value in the middle there that's not 0. So 2 to the 0th power will be equal to 1. Any number to the 0th power is equal to 1. And we've got our answer. Negative 2 to the 0th power. Well, in this problem, we ignore the negative because it's not in parentheses. 2 to the 0th power is 1, and then it must be negative. Negative 2 to the 0th power, well, the negative is part of the 2 because it's within the parentheses. So, any number to the 0th power, that must be 1. And we've got our final answer. So, any non-zero digit, any number to the 0th power, what does it give us? Good. Hopefully you said 1 because that's the correct answer. Here we have to simplify. And in this problem, we're going to look at how many powers of x we have. We've got x to the second power and x to the negative second power. Well, if we look at those, we've got x to the 2 minus 2. That's 0. x to the 0th power. And then we have y's. We have y to the 5th and y to the negative second. 5 minus 2, that's 3. So we get x to the 0, y to the 3rd but we shouldn't leave our answer with anything to the zeroth power because we know that equals one. So we're gonna get one y to the third power. But we don't need to ever write one times some number because one times some number is just that number. So we're gonna get y to the third power. We've got our final answer. We've simplified this expression that has variables and powers to y to the third. Lesson practice will be on page 331. Make sure you've got your notes complete, and I'll see you during our next class.